Well, hey all, welcome to another Valley Forged. I'm just doing a quick video on leather. You know, I have a 10 watt diode laser, but I worked with lasers pretty much across the board. And uh, I made like I made this on a 150 watt CO2 laser uh, because I, I, I created these purses, right? Using curves and I needed to make handles for the purses. And so I needed to learn how to do leather. Now this is a first iteration and I really didn't know what I was doing, but hey, they came out okay and I learned so much. So, you know, I'm getting a little better, starting to do a little bit more advanced work with leather. And I, you know, lasers are so great for cutting out leather. I was just absolutely amazed. There are so many other laser, laser projects to do with leather. And uh, when I first got my 5.5 watt diode laser, uh, one of the first things I made was this wallet. And it really wasn't that difficult. Of course, you know, not the greatest, uh, most difficult wallet of all, but hey, it works. This is my daily use wallet and uh, I'm happy with it. So uh, I started cutting out hat patches. You can glue, put the glue on the back and just uh, iron this onto the front of a hat. Uh, there's so many things that you could do with leather. And I really find that a diode laser does so well cutting out leather. And so I figured to make, make a quick video on it. And if there's more things that you'd like to know about leather and how it works with a laser, just leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, I'm going to be doing lots of videos, especially now on the diode lasers. I purchased the, uh, you can go back and watch my videos. I purchased the uh, Ortur Laser Master 3 not very long ago. I'm super happy with it. So I tried here some tests. Now I haven't done anything to these. And so uh, I'm going to here in a second to see if I can make a difference. But here's one with no air. And it pretty much, this is a two ounce, uh, uh, sorry, two millimeter leather, which, you know, you can go on Amazon. This is just one from Amazon. I have some nicer leather that I bought from Buckle Guy if you're interested in buying some nicer leather. But this was for testing and it was just a, a, a decent two millimeter to three millimeter uh, leather. And this is just straight up. And it, of course, cut all of them out except for one little square on the 25% at 400. So obviously with up to six ounce, you're probably going to go through like butter without a ton of charring. And that is pretty darn good. Uh, you can see here if you're going into the engraving at about 6,000 speed at 50%, this is a 10 watt laser, you're going to get a very clean result without charring on the sides. So that is also very encouraging. And so I'll be doing quite a bit more of that soon. Uh, this is with the air. And if you watched my last video, you know I did a modified air assist on the Laser Master 3. And it works beautifully. But on leather, not so much. Uh, it actually made it look worse. I'm going to try and uh, scratch that off with our Mr. Clean here in a minute and the Kiwi brush. And see which one actually looks better after a brush but it looks to me like no air is just fine. Now this one, I had masked off. So obviously it's not going to work for your lighter engraving. The masking would still be there. But as far as your uh, medium engraving, you can mask and it is going to make the leather overall cleaner. I mean, you can notice the difference between the brightness, just the smoke makes, but you do get these little residues if you don't really push down the tape and then that makes it more difficult to get off and yada yada. So I really think you don't need it. Uh, unless you want to do some cutting uh, that's pretty deep. You know, say you got at least an 8 millimeter or something and you don't want to have charring around the edges. That may be a huge benefit because you can see there are just a little bit around the edges when you don't have the mask. It's a brighter piece. So we're going to throw out the... Well, actually, here, let's... Uh, Let's put the camera down and see if we can't make any of these look better. So first of all, I'm going to go over this with a Mr. Clean. If you don't have these and you, you're working with leather, you probably want to get it. 
it uh, just makes things so easy to get rid of a lot of charring. Now I've seen people do this also with water, um, and we can try that. Now you don't want to get leather too wet, but I tell you, when I when I made these uh, when I made these, I got them fully wet because I was using a 150 watt laser, and the charring was pretty bad actually, and so I just fully wet them, and that really helped with the charring, and they seem to work fine. So take that for what it's worth. But you can already see that that has helped quite a bit as far as just the charring around the numbers and whatnot, but it doesn't get it all. So, of course, I would advise not trying to go that deep without masking tape. But for most engraves, again, around 50% at 5,000 power for this particular one, looks great. I got no issues with that, and leather is just going to be so much fun to work with. Now let's try this one that I did air on. I'm sure the camera is wobbling at this point, but... So, it is absolutely 100% better. Uh, actually, it's starting to rival the one that had no air. But I still see no reason why you would want air. So I'm going to throw that out. Uh, there may be uses for air, and I'm going to try that later if you guys have a question about that. And then let's try here, see if we can clean up the one that had the mask on it. And I'm actually having trouble getting rid of these lines from the, what got beneath the masking tape. I don't really see a lot of improvement there. These, this dirt, this uh, grime seems to be in deeper than it did with no air and no tape. And I actually kind of like the, the look of the slightly smokier. So I also have this Kiwi brush, which has come in handy for leather to getting some of the smoke and whatnot or charring out of the insides. Um, there we go. As you can see with the masking tape as well, there were some that just didn't cut out that they did here. So that masking tape does make a difference. And honestly, I, I just don't think it's worth it. As you can see, you know, the difference in charring at the higher levels, but that's about it. And again, you can mask at those higher levels if you really want to get in deep to the leather. But then you might have this little residue here that is very difficult to get off where you really don't have that here. I mean, even at the lower levels, this is totally crisp. Yet you see some of this here on the one with tape. So I'm actually going to throw out the one with tape. And I'm going to say we are better off, no air, and just absolutely crisp down here at your lower power levels. Just gorgeous. And the cutting is fantastic. I mean, that, that's very crisp and with very little smoke. So I, I'm very happy with that. Now, I did say that I was going to try to uh, do a little bit of water with this and see if that makes a difference. Now, of course, I'm going to dry it off right after. Uh, that just wet it up, didn't it? I don't think enough to make any hurt or anything, but you're not going to really get to see how it worked until after it dries. But it does look like it cleaned it up. Look, you can already see here in these edges, that is looking better. So a little bit of water, not too much, just dampen it up and then quickly dry it off with the sponge. I think that is a better look. What do y'all think? And uh, as far as gluing leather, now, of course, I have this double-sided uh, tape, or sorry, uh, double-sided glue. So you basically iron it onto one side, and now it's ready. Anytime in the future I want to stick this on, all I got to do is put the iron down. And uh, I actually learned that from Big Brondo, if you want to go check out his channel. I'll try to leave that in the description. He taught me a lot about making leather hat patches and easy to do without a heat press. As far as glue goes, I really wanted to let you guys know, use this Aqualim 315. A lot of people use this uh, barge stuff, and it is super toxic. And it's going to smell up the area. I'm sure it's not good for you to work with in your hands. Um, and this Aqualim is water-based. It's, uh, from all accounts, it works really well. I have had zero trouble with it. Um, I don't have no sponsorship or thoughts with them at all, but... 
uh, I just want to say I am very happy with it. I've been using it with some other crafts and uh, it's it's been nice. I just bought this generic bottle and poured some in there and that's worked out really well. So this isn't the most formal video, but I did want to at least get this out there for leather to see if any of you were interested in learning more about that. And uh, I think that turned out really nice. Let me know your experience with leather. I think this is one of the, the better uses for a laser is leather craft. And uh, I will for sure do more videos on that in the future. All right, see you in the next one.